Hi, my name is Sean Cothy. This is my first tutorial. Uh, I'm just going to go through and show you guys how we made this ident, which we made for Star Power uh, with Venture 3 in London. I'll concentrate mainly on the After Effects side, but I will show you briefly some cinema files and how we exported OBJ sequences or nulls to be used with Plexus. So let's get going and have a look. So we got some motion capture guys in to capture the motions of these different sports guys. Now if you want to do something similar, um, you can get some BVH files online, which are motion capture data. Um, if you go to cgspeed.com and click on motion capture, um, then you can click on the motion builder friendly version, is what I used. There's a list here of all the motions, and there's quite a lot of them, so um, you can go have a look through there. What I just did is I just did a search for backflip and came up with a few here, and then I went and downloaded the corresponding BBH directories, which is this one here, 86 to 94. Um, so download those, and once you've expanded them, you'll get a folder like this, um, and then 8703 is the one we are going to use. So if you open up Cinema, get a new file, and go File Open, and find the file that we're after, 87 underscore 3, and open that, and it'll ask you about scale, let's just leave it at 1. And there we have it. So you've got a nice backflip motion there. And they should all start in a T pose. Now what we want to do is just hide that and grab some geometry in the content browser within presets in Prime in the humans folder. There's a model called Fred which I used what I had to do was get rid of the eyes and the teeth um, I scaled it right down and matched it up to the T pose so the first thing I did was I put a polygon reduction deformer onto it and set the polygon reduction to 97 and if you say current state to object we're starting to get something a little bit closer to what we want I went in and I just kind of cleaned up bits like this and simplified it I also made sure that it was um, sort of equidistant points, so parts like the forearm here, there's a bit too much space there, so I went and filled in parts, simplified the hands because there's a bit too much going on there, um, and added in a few points in places. Um, what I ended up with was this guy. So as you can see, I've just moved the arms up into the T pose, roughly matching the joints underneath. The scale's about the same doesn't have to be completely perfect what we'll do is we'll select all the joints and the geometry and then go character bind and if you're on the first frame when it's all matched up you should see that your geometry is now following those points I put a camera in there with a fairly simple camera move. Just animated the position and rotation of the camera as he kind of does his flip. At this point, I would export the Plexus OBJ sequence to be used in After Effects. Let's put that into the backflip folder that I've already set up. And then you also need to save a compositing file and then just click on Save After Effects 
compositing project and include 3D data. Just put it straight in there. And that should save your compositing file. For the streak, uh, you can see that I've just drawn a spline in there for the motion of the streak that comes through. Let's just have a look at this simple camera move. It's looking good. Put in a null and give it a align to spline tag. Set the spline to be your spline that you've drawn in there and animate the position from 0 to 100 over 50 frames. Let's just make sure the interpolation is linear. So you've got a nice move there. And then we'll go ahead and get our particles to follow that null. So if you go into your content browser, within the studio folder, in simulation thinking particles, in presets, let's grab an emitter. Let's just put the view to list. Let's grab a standard emitter. Then let's also grab some effectors. Let's get a TP friction and a planar wind. What I did is I set up some different groups. Um, let's just call that O1. O2. And O3. Um, nice to give them a different colour so you can see see them easily. And for the let's put this all let's put this emitter into the null. Let's just drag these underneath it. So for the emitter, let's give it particle group 1. Let's change the spread angle to 10. The size to 0 0.2, 0 0.2. Then we will tick inherent emitter velocity. Change the speed to 2 with a variation of 90%. In the life, let's untick use document length and let's just give it a life of 6 frames. Variation here, we'll give it 75%. Then we're going to change the wind. I think I had the strength down slightly, I'm not too sure why. Turbulence needs to be up to 800. Change the frequency to 1, size at 2, and the dependence to 50 on the size and 50 on the mass. Then in the friction, I set that to 16 and 16. And then I just gave it 75 on the dependence. I made sure it was on that particle group, particle group number one. And then let's just call that one, emitter number one. Just make sure we zero out the coordinates of the emitter so it is following the null. And not offset and there we go so you can see you've got some particles happening there just to make it a little bit more interesting I duplicated up the emitter twice and the same with the friction um, renamed them So 
so let's just make sure that they're referring to the right group to separate them out. That one's group two, and that one is group three. And then same for the friction, let's say group two, and this one is group three. So let's just change the friction numbers. So group two, let's give it seven. <coughs> And group three, let's put that down to three. Then let's just change some of the settings in the emitters to make them slightly different. For the spread, I'm going to put that up to 35. And then I'm going to change the speed to 10. And let's just give it a little bit more life. So that's 17. Then let's change emitter number three, and let's just give let's give them small particles for this third one. Let's put that up to two hundred. Spread. Let's make that sixty. Let's put the size up here for this one as well, and let's change the speed to forty-five, and the life. To 32. So now you'll see that um, the different particle emitters have different values and different frictions. So it just gives you a bit more interest in the way they're kind of coming off, and there's um, a bit more randomness and spread to it. Makes for a nicer effect. So our particles are looking good. To export an OBJ sequence, we need some geometry. So what I did is I made a extrude object and then I put in a MoGraph tracer object into the extrude object. Now in the tracer you want to put all particles and connect all objects. So we're making some geometry which is great and we can set the extrude down to 0.01 so you can't really see it there but it will be exporting some geometry which the OBJ sequence will pick up and we can use that in After Effects so let's do the same again let's go File Export Plexus OBJ sequence and let's put that one in the Streak folder And then again, let's export a compositing project file for After Effects. Let's save that. Let's just put that straight in there. And now we've exported our OBJ sequences and our compositing data. One other thing I did do is I created this floor object, uh, which has just got um, a bunch of polygons with some randomness to them. And I also exported that as an OBJ sequence to be used as the floor object. In the next tutorial we'll head over to After Effects and import the OBJ sequences and the camera data. We'll get that working with Plexus and start creating this look.